Hey, welcome back to Pop Culture Graveyard. I am Hollis, and today I'm going to feature one of my all-time favorite punk bands, Fugazi. Technically, Fugazi is a post-hardcore band, but stylistically, they're a hybrid. They blend the best elements of hardcore, post-punk, reggae, funk, and a whole bunch of other genres to create infectious, uncompromising music that any music fan can enjoy. Fugazi were one of the most forward-thinking political bands of their time. They routinely played concerts where they charged no more than $5. They made an effort to play underage shows, played benefits for worthy organizations free of charge. But Fugazi rarely played festivals because they like to maintain control of their concert, and they want to be able to take responsibility for the audience's actions. The band have always been so uncompromisingly anti-commercial that they still haven't sold a t-shirt. To this day, if you see somebody wearing a Fugazi t-shirt, it's a bootleg. So please join me for a deep dive on one of the most important bands this country has ever produced. Fugazi. Everybody settle down. Be kind to each other. No pushing. Before I begin, I just want to give a shout out to my newest patron, Thank you, Kathy. Welcome aboard. I appreciate you. If you would like to support the channel and get a shout out, please join my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash pop culture graveyard. Now on with the show. Fugazi consisted of Ian Mackay on guitar and vocals, Guy Picciotto on guitar and vocals, Joe Lally on bass and occasional vocals, and Brendan Canty on drums. In November of 1988, the band released... Fugazi, this Fugazi EP, aka Seven Songs, is one of the most important releases of the 80s. I can't tell you how many bands this inspired. I could tell you, but that would be my longest episode ever. This eponymous EP kicks off with Waiting Room, which is an undeniably great song, and one of five tracks I'd play for non-Fugazi fans to get them into the band. Waiting Room begins with a bass run that is so identifiable, I'd wager it's known by many people who claim to have never heard a Fugazi song. The lyrics are pretty stripped down, and many people interpret the song and its refrain of waiting in the waiting room because they can't get up as being about prison life. But in actuality, the song is about Ian's frustration, about how his previous band, Embrace, fell apart and how he wasn't going to rush his next project. So with Fugazi, Ian was going to be patient and assemble the right people and wait for the right time to unveil his new musical project. By the way, if you like Fugazi even a little bit, you really need that Embrace album. Trust me, it's the trail of sonic breadcrumbs that leads to Fugazi. Enough said. If you've ever seen a live clip of Waiting Room, you've no doubt seen how people lose their minds to this song. It always cracks me up how sometimes Ian would give the crowd this kind of pep talk about respecting each other's boundaries and about not noshing too hard and possibly hurting someone. Then the band would launch into Waiting Room. That song is an adrenaline shot to the heart. If I had ever gotten arrested at a Fugazi concert for slamming into someone so hard I injured them, I'd be like, Your Honor, in my defense, the band was playing Waiting Room. Case dismissed. Waiting Room is one of the best album openers ever. It not only sets the tone for a great EP, but it announces the arrival of a major new band. The next song, Bulldog Front, is an anti-macho joint, mostly sung by Guy, with both he and Ian taking the choruses, which is kind of fun. Bad Mouth is my favorite song on this EP. I think of Bad Mouth as almost Waiting Room Part 2. That's how funky it is, and that's how amped up it gets me. I believe the song is all about people who waste their lives trying to hang on to what they used to be. Ian Mackay is one of the least nostalgic people on the planet, and I think his constant musical evolution used to repeatedly come up against a lot of opposition from narrow-minded people in the hardcore scene who had definite ideas about what music was and was wasn't hardcore. Bad Mouth is a big fuck you to those people. Burning is a great song, I believe about drugs, possibly heroin. Whichever drug it is, I believe it killed its user. That's how that usually ends. Give Me the Cure is a Gee sung track. He doesn't try too hard. He simply lays the song down with whispered authority. Unlike lots of bands from the late 80s and early 90s, Fugazi's music and lyrics are aging like fine wine. I don't know if there's ever been a better time for the lyrics, give me the shot, give me the pill, give me the cure. Coming on the heels of my Bikini Kill episode, which you can reach by clicking above, I'm reminded of just how necessary, even today, a song like Suggestion is. 
First of all, the music to Suggestion is both sexy and seductive. I don't know if Fugazi ever had a tighter groove, which is perfect for both setting the table for a sex talk as well as undercutting the lyrical scolding with a dose of sonic sugar. I read Suggestion as a song that's not only about rape and its damage to the victim's body, mind, and soul, but about the culture that tolerates it and the apathetic men who perpetuate its stigma by assigning blame to the victim. When it comes to rape, as the song says, we are all guilty. E.P. Ender Glue Man seems to be about the titular character being addicted to drugs. It could be any drug, honestly, but I like to take it literally that it's about a guy addicted to glue. But whereas the Ramones made light of that addiction, Fugazi has this bag-huffing ne'er-do-well taking his hit right in the park where children play. Fugazi doesn't romanticize drug use. It isn't funny. It isn't even sad. It just is. This is a killer, killer EP. And it was the building block for an awful lot of bands who came in and installed Alternative as the new mainstream. In June of 1989, the band released the Margin Walker EP. The six songs on the Margin Walker EP were later added to the seven songs on the Fugazi EP to form the CD, which was called, wait for it, 13 Songs. To this day, that CD is still their most successful release sales-wise. So some of you might already know the songs on the Margin Walker EP. Fugazi kick off their second EP with the title track, Margin Walker, which seems at first to be about the titular character wanting to assassinate somebody, but if taken metaphorically, he could simply be burning up with so much jealousy that he's simply shooting daggers mentally at his unrequited crush. I see Margin Walker as Guy's most effective Fugazi song yet, with he and drummer Brendan Canty really driving the song. The song End the Same is funky as hell, with a bass line that reminds us all that Joe Lally is the most underrated member of the band, which is hard to believe when so many Fugazi songs are based around his instrument. Yet somehow it's true. By the way, Rage Against the Machine, I see the blueprint for your entire sound in this one song. Burning 2 is my favorite song on this EP. And it's got a little bit of that waiting room dance ability. It's sort of a sister song to Burning off the Fugazi EP. But whereas that track was about the destruction of a human being, Burning 2 concerns our careless destruction of the planet. To quote the lyrics, we are consumed by society. We are obsessed with variety. We are all filled with anxiety that this world will not survive. This is one of those great songs where Ian and Guy trade off vocals. And as usual when they do that, it sounds amazing. If you listen to one track off the Margin Walker EP, Make it burning too, trust me. The song Provisional almost has an indie rock feel to it. The music sounds uplifting, yet it's one of Fugazi's most downbeat songs, as it seems to be about the Nazi atrocities, and in general, how our government and others just tend to stand by and watch horrible things happen. It has my favorite Guy line in it. Cause that's the price to pay for hoping every slip's not a slide. Yeah, Guy. Lockdown is a manic scree about the American prison system and its sad status as a growth industry. Promises is a kick-ass way to end this EP with a sleepy groove that lulls you during the verses and shakes you awake during the choruses. Just when you think the song ends, Joe fucking Lally comes back with another intense bass loop that sends the band into an overdrive outro where Fugazi essentially runs through the tape to finish this sprint of an EP. In December of 1989, the band released Three Songs. The Three Songs on Three Songs would later be added to the Repeater LP, which I'll get to next, to form the CD with the name, wait for it, Repeater Plus Three. Three Songs kicks off with song number one, which is a real anthem that kicks serious ass in an old school hardcore way. Its lyrics fire shots at the rules that develop around music scenes, from the length of your hair to your hometown, to sniping in the music press, and in the end, it all means nothing. There's your message. The B-side instrumental, Joe Number One, aptly named because it kicks off with one of Joe Lally's fattest bass lines, where you can really tell that Joe grew up listening to funk, R&B, and soul. The band's use of space really pushes this track into the post-punk area. Guitars ratchet this song's sound up a notch, then the song stops on a dime before jumping back into the funky groove. It repeats this trick a few times without losing any momentum before bursting into some seriously heavy riffage. It's one of Fugazi's best instrumentals. Final track, Break In, here's Guy singing all about sex. 
That is, until the final lines, where he might be talking about an unwanted pregnancy. With Fugazi, everything has consequences. The lyrics for song number one and Break In, which are both printed on the back, really detail the differences between Ian and Guy's types of songs. And for a release with just three songs, there's an awful lot of variety on this. In April of 1990, the band released Repeater. This is the band's first full-length album, and it's still my favorite album by Fugazi. So much so that I had to replace my original copy, which was Beat to Hell. Please support Discord Records and buy their albums. I'll put a link below. The sound here is much cleaner and more professional sounding, and the songs on this album seem to have finally found the perfect balance between post-punk hardcore and reggae that they had been searching for on their earlier releases. Turnover is a very simple song, and simply perfect. Over a circular guitar pattern, he chastises all of us who have woken up to the world's problems only to turn off the alarm, turn over, and go back to sleep. Shame on you. Fantastic table setter for this album. Which brings us to the title track, Repeater. This was one of my favorite tracks to spin while out DJing, because it's funky as fuck. And when the song repeatedly stops on a dime, it gave me several chances to crossfade to other songs that blast out of the starting gate. After Waiting Room, the chorus to Repeater is probably their most sing-alongable. That's not a word, dude. It's still true. Repeater deals with gun-related homicides, which in the D.C. area, during Fugazi's prime, were among the highest in the nation, mostly due to the crack epidemic. The people pulling the triggers on these repeaters get thrown in jail and become nothing but a number, much like their victim becomes just another statistic in the newspaper. The guitars on Brendan Number 1 have an industrial feel to them. Not like Ministry or Killing Joke industrial. I'm talking about as if this song was being played by sentient machines, like record lathes and table saws. The song Merchandise is one of my favorite tracks on this album, and it's definitely my favorite Ian vocal here. This track features rock-solid drumming from Brendan Canty, raucous guitars, and a serious anti-commercialism message. This song is telling people that if they don't buy anything, the people selling have no real power. It's beautifully summed up in the lyrics that go, We owe you nothing. You have no control. You are not what you own. Blueprint is perhaps my favorite Guy Picciotto song ever. I see the song as being about music itself and how a new blueprint is needed because ignorant consumers have been buying stupid shit for so long. There's no room for quality music anymore. And if you don't get turned on by Guy's intro of I'm not playing with you, I'm not playing with you, I'm not playing with you, yeah, you, Fugazi's not the band for you, which is fine. I think Foghat is going on tour. I'm sure Motley Crue is getting back together. Have you tried dubstep? The lyrics to the song Greed are as plain spoken as a Stooges song, which is rare for Fugazi. With fun stutter step rhythms, Greed details a taker who wanted everything and needed everything. I think I roomed with him in college. The song Two Beats Off is either about a petty thief or an embezzler at a large corporation. Either way, the guitar work is stellar. Styrofoam is another great little song by Ian that equates the cultural hatred spewed by bigots to the destruction of our planet caused by styrofoam. I am with that. A redux of Provisional off Margin Walker? Reprovisional revisits that message? Shut the Door is a sleepy yet chilling song about someone ODing on drugs? The song shifts perspective from the girl tying off her arm and breaking the surface of the skin with the needle so she can feel free to another person, I assume a loved one, observing her body in the morgue. It's one of the best anti-drug songs out there that is not preachy. Fugazi perform a spirited version of the song to open up their 1999 film Instrument, represented here on VHS. This is Hollis reminding you to be kind and rewind. Incidentally, if you've never seen Instrument, you really should. It was shot by Jem Cohen over 10 years, from 1987 to 1997, featuring Fugazi concerts, tours, interviews, backstage antics, etc. And I promise you don't have to watch it on VHS like this old man. I'm going to put a link below to Instrument, because I really want you to see that. In July of 1991, the band released Steady Diet of Nothing. Sophomore Slump? What sophomore slump? Often overlooked by critics and fans alike, I have a soft spot in my heart for this album. Probably because this was the album that the band had out at the exact time I got into Fugazi. I feel it's very underrated, and it sees the band really stretch their sound out a lot further. 
this is definitely my pick for the Fugazi album that best showcases the rhythm section. Joe and Brendan absolutely kill it on this album. Guy's song Exit Only kicks off this album with a seriously funky groove, even in spite of Guy throwing around pretentious words like exeunt and sympatric, you'll find the song irresistible. Reclamation is my real jam on here. Joe lays down a hot, sticky groove with his bass that inspires some of Ian's best guitar work. If you listen to no other song on this album, listen to Reclamation. You'll really hear what I mean about the rhythm section shining. Nice New Outfit is another winner with a killer chorus. Side One just has a great collection of songs. Latin Roots is a sexy track with even funkier drumming than usual. The guitar work is understated yet powerful, and I really think it's Guy's best track on the LP. Aside from the song Runaway Return, which I really like, Side 2 isn't quite as distinguished as Side 1, but it finishes super strong with K-Y-E-O, which is an acronym for Keep Your Eyes Open, one of my favorite songs on the album. The lyrics tell us that silence is a dangerous sound, which refers to the uneasiness of the quintessential quiet before the storm. The storm in this case might be the Gulf War, which began six months before this album came out. This track is a reminder to keep your eyes open not only to what the military is doing around the world, but to what your local police force is doing right under your nose. In live concerts, Ian would sometimes dedicate this song to Rodney King, who was beaten by police and had it all captured on video. So KYEO is another in a long string of Fugazi songs that are sadly relevant today. In June of 1993, the band released In On The Kill Taker. By 1993, grunge had firmly established itself and with an awful lot of grunge bands name-checking Fugazi as an influence, this album did fairly well for them. The album kicks off with Facet Squared, with intense guitar and some righteous aggression, and I fully endorse its anti-jingoistic sentiment. It takes the military rule of a flag should never touch the ground, and cleverly co-ops that phrase to interpret it as a flag should never be planted anywhere. Public Witness Program is one of Guy's best songs with up-tempo music and vocals right out of the gate. I believe it's taking the piss out of undercover cops who get paid to stand around and watch. My favorite part of the song is the hand claps that come in before the pre-chorus. And I gotta say, Public Witness Program is probably my pick for best song on this album. I'll put a link to it below. Returning the Screw, what's good, Henry James? Starts off quieter than any Fugazi track. But that doesn't mean it sacrifices any intensity. Before long, the track finds Ian screaming about revenge as a man who got screwed and wants to return the fine disservice. Smallpox champion sees Guy championing the plight of the Native Americans, to whom the U.S. government purposely gave blankets infected with smallpox. Nice fucking country you got here. This track is infectious as hell. And it's another reason why I think In On The Kill Taker is Guy's best album for Fugazi. 23 Beats Off has a really sleepy opening, then launches into a relentless assault, either about a closeted gay in the military or about Magic Johnson contracting HIV. The interpretation about Magic Johnson, who was in the news constantly back then, is the most compelling, especially since Magic's number was 32, 23 backwards, and 23 was Michael Jordan's number implying that Jordan didn't catch HIV because, rather than engage in promiscuous sex like magic, Michael beats off. Like Mike, if I could... Oh, I am like Mike. It's hard to think of a more inviting side two opener than the very aptly named Sweet and Low. Musically, Sweet and Low reminds me a little bit of a kinder, gentler blueprint off of Repeater, but whereas that track was a threat, this instrumental is more of a lullaby. That sweet intro is quickly forgotten once Cassavetes kicks in. Though the guitars take over for most of the track, the song repeatedly falls into an infectious groove that reminds me a lot of an amped up version of Buena by Morphine. Remember them? Guy sings the praises of independent filmmaker John Cassavetes with ferocity and style. This song's subject is not as odd a choice as it may seem for the band to write about, given that Fugazi did for independent music what John Cassavetes did for independent film. Instrument is a badass track with an insidiously sexy bass groove and killer vocals from Ian. Given this album's popularity during the grunge movement, Instrument is probably one of the tracks that hooked their new audience. Album Ender, Last Chance for a Slow Dance is Guy's best vocal performance on this album. And the understated music doesn't try to do too much. And it doesn't have to in order to hook you. According to Guy, he built the song out of a two-finger chord shape used in Fleetwood Mac's Rhiannon, 
which was one of the first songs that Guy learned to play on guitar when he was 13. Last Chance for a Slow Dance is where poetic songcraft meets inner turmoil. In June of 1995, the band released Red Medicine. First song, Do You Like Me, is an abrasive start to the album, but it's also one of the best songs Guy ever wrote. You want to know how I know it's a great song? Because sometimes I'll be in the shower singing Lockheed Lockheed Martin Marietta, and the names of contractors for the military industrial complex are not your typical lyrics someone sings in a shower. Up next is Bed for the Scraping, and it is my favorite song on this album. If you listen to one song off Red Medicine, make sure it's Bed for the Scraping. All the classic Fugazi touches are here. Fast, aggressive music, pointed lyrics about a dirty little secret, which I assume is rape, and spit-shout vocals you'll want to scream along with. Latest Disgrace sees Guy tackling Big Pharma, as I believe the song concerns doctors who prescribe medication to patients that they themselves would never take. Birthday Pony begins almost like an audio recording taken from a Butthole Surfer's tour bus. The song itself speaks to the schizophrenia that Ian feels between being one person when on tour and another person when at home. When Ian's at home, he feels almost like the titular Birthday Pony, where he's a rare event to be looked at and enjoyed but he's not really a participant. Side one ends with Fell, Destroyed, which aside from having a really badass title, also references one of my all-time favorite reggae tracks, Ring the Alarm by Tenor Saw, which is a song that took over my life for about six months. Tenor Saw's song goes, Ring the Alarm, Another Sound is Dying. Whoa, hey. Fugazi's play on that is Ring the Alarm, or You're Sold to Dying. Whoa. If you don't think Fugazi enjoyed reggae, you clearly have never heard any of their songs. Long Distance Runner is one of the best tracks on this album. It's got that jittery guitar chug that Fugazi uses to great effect in so many of their songs. And when the band gets in the pocket on this one, it's as deep and steamy a groove as they have ever created. I'm sweating just thinking about it. It ends this album in a way that leaves you wanting more. And more is what you got in April of 1998 with End Hits which is somewhere in this apartment, and I cannot find it. I know vinyl collectors feel my pain. End Hits reached 138 on the Billboard charts. That would be a decent showing for any band, given that there are plenty of popular bands that don't even crack the top 200. But for a band like Fugazi, who not only doesn't play the game, but who changed the game, that's pretty damn good. The irresistible opener, Break, brings a little piano into the mix, and I like it. It's a great way to open this album because it eases listeners into a more complex sound than they're used to. The band had by now become more sophisticated, and this entire album is proof of that. Break doesn't have many lyrics, but the ones it has are effective, and it seems to be speaking about someone who didn't know what they had until they destroyed it. Place Position is one of Guy's best songs, and between the stellar vocal performance and the manic musicianship, it's really hard to catch the lyrics, which are about the random nature of borders and countries, and about what the term home really means. Recap Modotti is a laid-back drum-based track with a rare lead vocal by Joe Lally. Joe's got a nice subdued vocal delivery, and this track asks the musical question, what if Fugazi had decided to be pavement? I believe the lyrics deal with an immigrant's life in America, driving a cab, sending money home, and bravely getting by with far less than most privileged Americans, such as the song's narrator who has friends who can taxi him around. No Surprise is another great Guy track, which finds him at his most seductive. Then out of left field come some psychedelic touches in the form of underwater-like vocal and guitar effects. And they work! Five Corporations just may be Ian's best song on this album. It's got a little drive like Jehu under its fingernails, if you know what I mean. Dude, nobody gets that. This song has to do with how the same five corporations own everything, which is the main reason that every single town is now starting to look like each other. The song Floating Boy is funky as hell, with a bass line that reminds me a little bit of Sweet Leaf by Black Sabbath. I shit you not. It's the sexiest song ever about getting sunburned at the beach. Is there another? Foreman's Dog is clearly about mass media, specifically its glorification of shows like Cops, which was very big at the time. The song Guildford Fall got its name because the band recorded it in the fall at their practice space in Guildford, Connecticut. The song itself seems to be a message to those with eating disorders who are slowly emaciating themselves to death, reminding them that a snake ingests 40 times its body weight. Who's hungry? 
Pink Frosty is a seriously quiet, offbeat track that sounds like it could have been on a late 90s Beastie Boys album. FD opens up like it's going to ease us out of this album quietly. And then all hell breaks loose. Both Guy and the guitars scream. Guy is screaming about the macho-headed patriarchy and its degradation of women and how men find ways to make money off of women. It's a typically defiant way to bring the curtain down on this album. There are lots of people out there that consider End Hits to be Fugazi's best album. I'm not one of them, but it shows you how good an album it really is. On October 8th of 2001, the band released Furniture. The Furniture EP features three songs. This EP came out about a week before their final full-length release. Furniture is a great old song that dates back to their earliest demo. It's no real surprise that they would want to release an official version of it. Furniture has perhaps, perhaps, Joe Lally's most funky bass line. I'm talking 100% uncut stank. So if you're a big fan of the funky bass element of Fugazi's music, you really need to check out Furniture. Number five is a heart attack of an instrumental, and the production on it, and this whole EP really, is breathtaking. Hello Morning finishes this EP off right with a righteous rant from Guy that features the great line, we're time capsules in a garbage can. Let that sink in. Hello Morning is another song, like Furniture, that dates way back to the 80s. In retrospect, it seems to me that the band might have had an inkling that their next album was going to be their final one. That's why I think they recorded the Furniture EP concurrent with it and released it just before it. On October 16th, 2001, the band released The Argument. Released just one month after 9-11, The Argument was a welcome respite from the sea of anxiety, fear, and hatred that was gripping the nation. With the untitled intro, Nothing More Than Ambient Noise, Cash Out properly begins this album, with Ian's vocals sounding almost like he's in 311. Cash Out rails against the eviction of low-income tenants, either through eminent domain or even shadier moves like the Ellis Act. The song details how politicians were willing accomplices in this forced gentrification in the name of development. As usual, Fugazi wraps up a serious message in a delicious candy coating. The band made another stylistic leap with this album, and this track is a real example of that. Guy's opening vocals, for full disclosure, border on primal scream therapy, but before long he's giving you the same Guy vocals you know and love over some of the prettiest backing vocals that Fugazi's ever had. This is straight up indie pop, and a top three song on this LP for me. Epic Problem sees Ian taking up the guise of a guy with an epic problem, but in typical male fashion, he just bottles it up and pretends it's not a problem. Check out these lyrics. Inside I know I'm broken, but I'm working as far as you can see. And outside it's all production. It's all illusion set scenery. Whew. Poetry. The Kill is an epic track. I say that because it's long and because it's about serious stuff, namely being born into racism and cultural hatred. Musically, it almost reminds me a little bit of The Murder Mystery by The Velvet Underground. It's very mumbly and subdued. It's another standout track for me. The ominous starlight has a lovely slow burn quality, with Ian adding just the right kind of piano to the mix. And Guy's vocals to me almost sound like big star era Alex Chilton. O oh is another great vocal performance from Guy. Fun fact, O oh is the only song in which we hear vocals from Ian, Guy, and Joe all on the same track. The track Night Shop is as far from waiting room as the band could get. Talk about evolution. Half this song is an intense Fugazi guitar attack, while the second half of the song almost sounds like something from Sunny Day Real Estate. This song is one of my favorites by Guy, and it's over way too soon. This album is the inevitable destination of the journey that began on Red Medicine. And while the band had slowly been expanding their sound on all their previous albums, the argument just takes that new sound for granted. They're not holding your hand. They're simply forging ahead with where they want to be. It's a bold musical statement, and it's a strong one as their last. And then in November of 2014, the band released First Demo. This is a fun little album. Fugazi recorded these tracks in January of 1988 at Inner Ear Studios, which at that time was still located in Don Zientera's basement, which you can see from the inner sleeve photo of the band recording. A lot of the songs you know by the band are here in really early form. The version of Waiting Room on here begins with a false start that I find really charming. Ian is tripped up when the band drops out, and you can hear him start singing accidentally, and then the band drops out, and he goes, oh, 
Whoops. Musically, it's very different from the version you see on their EP. It's a bit slower and looser with a loopy quality, and it's missing the power of the re-recorded version. But I chalk all that up to, they simply hadn't played hundreds of shows yet. Their exhaustive touring schedule would soon tighten up the screws on all these songs. This version of Merchandise, which is one of my favorite tracks on Repeater, is just finding its footing here. Believe it or not, Furniture is on here. It would be re-recorded in 2001 for their final EP. I think Furniture sounds the best out of all the tracks on this album. It's a nifty little song. Song number one is great on this. Brendan Canty's drumming is outstanding. The Word is a very underrated Fugazi track that I want everyone to check out. I'm going to put a link to it below. The lyrics are pretty cheeky for a Fugazi song. It details how someone with a problem, be it their parents, self-loathing, the ugliness of the world, can all be solved by one simple word. What is that word again? Oh, right. Change. The guitar tone on the word is extra delicious. You may remember Break In from the Three Songs release. Compared to the other songs, Break In sounds like it was almost done by a different band. Here in the demo, more than anywhere else, you can hear how Guy is tentatively trying to find his way into what is essentially a power trio at this juncture. Turn Off Your Guns is bouncy as hell. The song has some nice chord changes and it ventures into a lighter indie rock sound. And I'm into it. Turn Off Your Guns, by the way, is the one song here that was never released in any other recorded form prior to this 2014 demo release. And the same finds Ian tackling corruption among the police and military, where their latest victim becomes our latest distraction. Try these lyrics on for size. If you have to carry a gun to keep your fragile seat at number one, this is a bullet you can't outrun. Your way of thinking. Come on, where do you even go from there? How great are those lyrics? Prescient as fuck. The song ends with a reminder of the vicious cycle of death and how it's nothing but action and reaction and action and action and action. This band was talking about right now, whenever the fuck right now is. In Defense of Humans is a 70 mile per hour rebuke to the greedy and powerful who rob and rape this world at the expense of other human beings. The lyrics are as forward thinking as ever. In defense of humans, lay down your gender pride. We're born into our bodies, no chance to decide. Yes, you. You don't rise when people fall. Brilliant. If I could choose one word to sum up first demo, it's charming. This is a band that's about to change the world of music, and they're still figuring it out. There's something so charming about that. If you're a big Fugazi fan, I highly recommend the first demo. If you enjoy the bands I'm bringing you, please do me a favor and hit the like button and make sure to subscribe. And I will see you next week with a lot more cool stuff.